I'm Abigail Worley, and I work at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church, and I'm the director of children's ministries here. The idea of doing something and responding in some way to Hurricane Sandy happened because I got a fire lit under me about it and started emailing people, including my colleagues. We were at staff meeting and Gary said, if you need to drop everything to make this happen, this is a priority. And that kind of gave me the freedom to run with it. And so away we ran. Michael Sweeney was on the trip. He's the other young adult guy on staff. Bridget Kansky was on the trip. We had Colin, Colin Billings. And Colin is our student intern. Then we had Evan Williams. Evan is Colin's roommate at the University of Richmond. And Anna Humphreys, she brought so many blanket supplies. <laughs> Last but not least, we had Steve Simon. So we started with an idea of volunteering, but there was no easy way to make that happen. And then Michael out of the blue sent me an email that was like, what's this? And it was the Occupy Sandy website. Within half an hour, they'd responded to my email assuring me that we would be useful. It was obvious that in many ways, we had the same goals of wanting to be as useful and as helpful as possible because it's our call to be useful and helpful as members of humanity. Walking into St. Luke's and St. Matthew was overwhelming and inspiring all at the same time. The facade of the church looks much like many, many Episcopal churches I've seen in my life. And then we walked in and it was an amazing sanctuary. And you saw, quite obviously, all of the stuff, the volume of donations. There were so many Amazon boxes and diaper boxes and piles of clothing and the Paschal Candle was surrounded by donations of clothing. The communications area was upstairs in the balcony and there were banners and signs and people everywhere. It was wonderful to see the hub of energy. It wasn't just them using space. It was all of us working together. I don't know what I was expecting driving into Coney Island. The further we got in, the more I noticed how many relief trucks of various types there were and how much sand there was everywhere. Blizzard levels of sand having been shoveled into big piles and the cars that had been completely and utterly destroyed sitting there abandoned and passing time. I knew that we were on the forefront of relief. I knew that we were the tip of the iceberg but I didn't really quite realize how at the tippy top of that iceberg we were. Walking into the apartment complex for the first time, I was overwhelmed by how the mildew and the sand and the rundown nature didn't seem to just be because of the hurricane. We walked into an apartment being used solely for the purpose of being a distribution center. Evangeline and Beverly welcomed us and encouraged us and made it obvious that we were doing something meaningful for them. It was unimaginable what the way the water came and how high it was and you know what it's done to Coney Island. It's really can't really believe it that it happened but it did. Because it looked like a bomb went off and it's pitch black. It was so dark you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. <laughs> it was ooh, horrible. After we unloaded our van and our SUV full of supplies into this apartment, it quickly became apparent that organization was necessary in some way. And so we started to sort the goods into their categories. And then Colin and Anna and Evan worked to start filling these kits, which were basically just gigantic black trash bags full of a little bit of food, a little bit of water, just some basic things that people would need. And then once we opened at 1.30, people could come in and they would get their kit as their kind of base supply. And then they could make special requests. A lot of people were requesting more cleaning supplies. 
One of the most gratifying pieces of our work on Coney Island, setting up the distribution center, was seeing the things that we had worked to load that had been donated by parishioners, seeing those specific things organized in the distribution center and then given away to people who needed them that very day. Evangeline and Beverly too, I'm not sure how they can keep doing it. I mean, we were exhausted after doing it for just a few hours, just a day, in a bone-tired kind of way. And yet, I knew that they were going to get up the next day and do it all again and continue to serve their community. On Saturday morning, we got up and headed to Canarsie, Brooklyn. When Steve asked if he could have a ride to New York because he needed to do work on his father-in-law's house, slowly it dawned on me that we can do more than just give him a ride. We can do the work with him and help them try and rebuild after a devastating loss that happened in their home. The Canarsie Creek had never flooded, ever. And so when the hurricane hit, they just all heard a gushing noise and all of a sudden they had six feet of water in their homes. Steve's father-in-law's basement, after it had been flooded, kind of reminded me of a dungeon from my nightmares because it was so dark and the carpet was so black that until we started cutting into it, I thought it was a brown carpet. Our first task was to rip out carpet. And then Colin and Steve quickly started sawing a leather sofa in half and carrying this immense, soggy couch out of the basement. So for the majority of the day, we were pulling out drywall, pulling down insulation, and then bagging it and carrying it out. That was heavy work. That was mule work. There's nothing quite as gratifying as giving a good swift kung fu kick to drywall and seeing it come down. We stripped everything down to the studs of the drywall. We took out all the trim. At one point looking up from shoveling drywall into a bag and seeing that there were way more people in that basement than I thought a small basement could hold. I think the surprising thing about this experience for all of us was that we all at some point and in some way felt a call in it. Everyone during the weekend voiced wanting to do more, wanting to continue this. I heard Colin consider being a demo guy and I don't think it had to do so much with the nature of the work, but the purpose of the work. I had never realized how much community involvement mattered to me. We worked together for something bigger than ourselves and yet part of ourselves. We realized that our own community and the bigger community are almost one and the same in the sense that you have to care for and appreciate both of them. Here, Steve, come get it one more time so you can wave. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Don't hurt yourself. Okay. Hey! <laughs>